Hello and welcome to this first video looking at the GCSE AQA psychology course uh, and this is the developmental psychology uh, topic so we'll be looking at early brain development in this video um, and then go on to looking at some of the other developmental ideas such as Piaget's ideas going on to the web and kind of applications um, so in the spec, they give you information that you'll need to know in certain sections, uh, and this video is focused on the first part. So it says that you need to look at early brain development, and what that means is having a basic knowledge of brain development. So from simple neural structures in the womb, of the brainstem, thalamus, cerebellum, cortex, uh, and reflecting on development of autonomic functions, sensory processing, movement and cognition. Uh, and also the roles of nature and nurture. We all know what all of that means anyway, don't we? No, probably not, because there's lots of terminology in there. Um, and what the first thing I'd say is don't let that put you off. Actually, some of these concepts, while they sound quite complex, um, once you've gone over them, once you know that terminology, um, you'll be much more comfortable with them. And, and that's my big bit of advice, really, is just um, make sure you're you're kind of on top of your terminology and, and going over that and you, you'll um, come away being a lot more confident in this topic. First thing you need to know then about brain development in the womb. So obviously we all know how contraception happens. Shucks. Um, and so once uh, a baby is conceived, uh, it then develops in the womb. Um, and around three weeks after conception then, um, you start seeing the beginnings of the spinal cord and the brainstem. So things actually start developing quite quickly. By about four weeks, you can start seeing um, the, the, the shape of the spinal cord. Um, and obviously as time goes on up to nine months, um, you then start seeing more and more development. But the brain, certainly the beginnings of the brain, certainly, and the spinal cord are, are there by the, the three month mark, um, sorry, three week mark. Um, and we'll then look through at, at which areas develop at which different times. Firstly, um, we're going to be talking about neural structures. So here's your first bit of terminology. Um, what we mean when we talk about neural structures, the term neural refers to anything to do with the nervous system. Nice and simple, as long as you know what the nervous system is. So the nervous system is um, anything to do with, with nerves and feelings and sensations and sense. So that is the brain. Uh, the brain generally processes that information, receives and sends signals. There's the spinal cord as well. Um, so the spinal cord um, has lots of cells in there. Um, uh, neuro, uh, yeah, lots of cells, lots of sensations, lots of nerves, as it, as it suggests. So the, the nervous system is, is how we receive information in from the world. So when we're talking about neural structures, it's anything really to do with the brain, the spinal cord and that nervous system. So the first area that you need to be aware of is the brain stem. So the brain stem is a bit uh, connected to the spinal cord. You can see it in that diagram there. Um, and what the brain stem controls is the, the basic, what's known as autonomic behaviors. Um, so these are things that are developed for survival. These are things we absolutely need. So autonomic functions are things such as your heartbeat, your breathing, sleeping, eating, all of those things that we need to, to survive. And it's probably then no surprise to understand then why that comes quite early on. So it's one of the first areas that, that develops. Um, it's developed uh, at birth. Your, your, your brainstem is fully developed because, of course, you need all of those things um, to, to survive healthily. Uh, a good heartbeat, breathing, sleeping, eating, etc. Um, so it's the most developed brain area at birth. Everything else develops a little bit later. And obviously this topic is the developmental psychology topic. So we're, we're talking about what happens from contraception um, all the way up. Um, and obviously in, in this section, we're, we're talking more about neurology, the brain. So later on, you do look at the brain um, and um, neuropsychology in, in a bit more detail, but generally, um, and, and more about the, the brain areas. This is obviously linked to, to how we develop. What the brain stem is linked to is what's known as motor. Uh, and sensory functions, and sometimes those are put together, it's sensory motor. So motor just means movement, so, so anytime you move, you move your hands, etc. Uh, and sensory, think senses when, when we're taking in the world, touch, taste, smell, um, etc. So it carries the messages to and from the spinal cord um, and, the, and the rest of the body. Um, and so it, it's the way of the brain kind of 
getting those senses, getting those signals from, from the rest of the body, brainstem early development. What you then need to look at next, again, it's another neural structure because it's to do with the, the brain and the brain uh, and the spinal cord is known as the cerebellum. So cerebellum means little brain. So it's a bit further up than the brain stem. And what this deals with is uh, coordination, things like balance. And again, I've used that term before, sensory motor. So senses, motor activity, coordinating, um, ha a coordinating movement based on the senses uh, that we're picking up. It also has an impact on language uh, and emotion. So again, another one of the topics on the, the GCSE AQA course is language. You'll look at that in more detail, um, but th th it's good to know here from a developmental point of view that the, the cerebellum is involved in that. It actually develops later, as you can imagine, um, because those sorts of things are maybe a bit more developed and complex uh, language and emotions develop later and actually when we're um, when we're developing in the womb the, the the cerebellum is later developing than than the brain moving on then we look at the thalamus something known as the thalamus while we say the thalamus it's actually in two sections so you've got the diagram there which kind of shows that so you've got two sections of the brain um, known as hemispheres so much like the world you've got the north and south hemisphere um, you've got then the right and left hemisphere of the brain so it's the, the sections of the brain the areas of the brain um, and so the thalamus is kind of one structure but across the two different hemispheres so it, it might look like two or, as you can see on that left hand image um, what the thalamus does it's a, um, a hub for sending and receiving information to other areas it's a bit like a communication hub in, in terms of senses um, and so, yeah, it might receive information from your retina, so from your eyes, um, and send that to the area in your brain that deals with visual processing. Um, and again, we, you know, uh, anyone that's really looked at the memory topic, maybe we talk about processing and cognition. Um, and so that could be part of that. We talk about visual processing. Um, and then another example might be it sends information to the motor area, uh, from the motor area to the body. So we've got a motor area in the brain and it could be saying, OK, well, move your hand here, move your foot there, etc. So it's a it's a way of passing on that information as a uh, neural structure. Next, we look at something known as the cortex. A so cortex means bark. So think of a tree. The outer bit of that tree um, is, is the bark. So your, your cortex is the, the bit of your brain that is covered. It's sometimes called like a tea cozy. So you've got all those other structures that, we, that we've spoken about there, the brainstem, the cerebellum, the thalamus. But it's covered over the top by what's known as the, the cortex. Um, so it's about three millimeters thick. Um, uh, sometimes called the cerebral cortex. And again, it is these two halves. So you've got two um, hemispheres of your cerebral cortex and it, they, it deals with lots of, of different parts of information. Different areas of the cortex deal with different parts of information. So um, cognition, so cognition is another word for thinking. Again, you look at the memory topic or the perception topic, that's all to do with cognition and thinking, and, and that would uh, lots of that takes place in different areas of the cortex. So we've got the frontal cortex, that's just behind your, your forehead. Um, and again, when you look at the memory topic, you, you, you know, different types of sensory, um, uh, sorry, semantic or uh, episodic encoding happen in different areas of, of the cortex. So that was one of the studies that supported the idea that um, different types of long term memory um, do exist because because they're found in different areas in uh, brain scans. You, it, it also deals with sensory processing. Um, so visual auditory um, so the visual areas tend to be at the back of the brain. So you can see again in that diagram, it's got the cortex, this outer area with those ridges. Um, and then it's started to split it down into different areas there. So you've got the, the purple one is the sensory one. You've got their visual cortex. So that's at the back of the brain. Um, and so information from the eyes um, and the retina are passed uh, to um, yeah, the visual uh, cortex, uh, the back of the cortex for, for processing. You've got an auditory area as well. Um, if you look at A-level psychology, go into the auditory systems in, in a bit more detail uh, and you've got motor processing so that's doing movement again um, so in that those that study memory um, the um, procedural memory is 
it is linked to the motor area because you're, you're processing uh, information to do with movement. Um, so that's kind of, again, that's the red area you can see on the, um, on the diagram to the left there. Um, so yeah, sensory and motor areas, um, they are functioning in the womb. Uh, so we're talking about developmental psychology, how does the brain develop? They are functioning, but as you can imagine, as we get older, as we develop further, as children grow, um, certainly after birth, um, then they develop and, and it develops throughout our lives. So your cortex goes on making connections and, and processing the world uh, in different ways as we grow up. So that's pretty much covers lots of those um, neural areas that we spoke about. Um, and then the other bit, at the uh, nature nurture debate so quite a common debate in psychology are we born or are we made in its simplest term um, and so we need to look at that so um, obviously nature would suggest that uh, we're born with with certain things eye color etc um, and nurture would suggest that we develop those things through our environment we've learned them in other words um, so yeah nature we've inherited things comes from cells comes from our reform nurture comes from our environment, how we grew up, our experiences, etc. So um, what you will find a really good way to test the difference between nature and nurture is our twin studies. So an identical twin um, known as a monozygotic twin are they share a hundred percent of their same DNA. So from a nature point of view, they're, they're exactly the same. Um, and so if you've got identical twins um, and you look at how they've how they uh, end up growing up and any similarities we might suggest could be due, due to their nature. It could be um, what they've uh, inherited because it's the same between them. Um, any differences might be their nurture because it happened in their environment. The difficulty is that, of course, twins share quite a similar environment quite often as well. Um, but there are some occasions you can't do this um, as a study because it's completely unethical. But if you've got twins that are born and then raised separately, that's a good test of what is nature and what is nurture. And there are some unfortunate cases of that. Um, but um, yeah, that kind of gives you that, that, that understanding of the difference nature and nurture um, and so it's interesting as psychologists to ask well what is what is from what we're born with compared to what is um what we develop so things like um uh yeah the, the, the different traits different personality types different interests um what has come from from our genes and what what, what have we kind of learned to have there are things that will impact um the, the outcomes then so uh, and different environments can, can affect that so things like smoking mothers who smoke while pregnant give birth to smaller babies with smaller brains and um, so that is while it sounds quite biological it's actually an environmental um, uh, impact on people uh, things like infection if a mother develops an infection um, it could uh, affect the babies um, so Bello is a, is a good example of that people tend to have hearing loss um, and then voices as well so um, the brain of babies are impacted by the environment before they're born there's a good video um, of you tiktokers out there you might have seen it uh, they recognize that the mother's voice over um, over foreign voice, different voices that, that, that they haven't heard before. So it suggests that even in the womb, the environment is having an impact on, um, on babies and on their development. Um, so hopefully that gives you uh, a nice introduction into um, this topic, developmental psychology. This part, of course, looks quite biological, how we develop from conception um, until birth, essentially, uh, and then beyond from a brain development point of view, and then that difference between nature and nurture. Um, what is completely understood is that in inevitably um, we're all a mix of everything. It's quite hard to isolate what is one and what is the other, um, and we all tend to be an interaction between our our genes and our environment. Um, so hopefully that's given you a, a nice um, taste into the developmental topic. Going on later, then we'll start looking at theories around development. And Jean Piaget is one of the key researchers, key um, theorists around child development. So, so that will be coming up. Thank you for listening.